Was he with Protoss, right? I'm trying to remember here. Oh, Nazgul? Yeah. Was Damn, he with Protoss? Well, anyways, the point is, Nazgul is a pretty big honcho when it comes to things Team Liquid related. And he's going to be taking some of your questions later today. If you don't know what Razor Comms is, Razor Comms is going to be the way we communicate with him. Uh, it, it can be used like a voiceover program. It can also be used as a chat system. And there's a Team Liquid community group. We'll show you guys how to get there and how to use it if you've downloaded it. But uh, one of the cool things is him, Snoot, and Bunny, when we take a break in about two and a half hours-ish, uh, we'll be there just to take some questions. We'll get him on Skype. He'll take some answers and some interviews here as well. And it'll be kind of cool just to get thoughts of a guy who's in charge of things like Team Liquid. But at any rate, thanks to HTC for all the uh, giveaways we got today in chat. We haven't started any giveaways yet. I'm waiting for the go-ahead from the guy in charge of all this. But, guys, there's there's like a huge list of t-shirts uh, from them. There's Team Liquid store stuff. There's Blizzard gift cards. And, of course, type exclamation mark HTC giveaway in chat to get a link to the big giveaway, the phone. The HTC, hey. I think it's the M, the M, the HTC One M9, I think it's called. That sounds fancy. Yeah, I'll take it. But uh, well, <laughs> me too. It's like a seven hundred dollar phone. Please, thank you. <laughs> uh, in the top left corner of the map is going to be the blue jam player, Liquid Bunny. Yeah. In the bottom right, as the red zerg, it is Liquid Snoots. You literally. Stall the intro so you could ask in chat what type of chicken do you like? <laughs> Someone asked what they could ask Nazgul. Oh, that's true. You and could ask him. What type yeah, of poultry you is your favorite? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. I. Hey, yeah. Was this another map you could three bunker? No. No, no not, not the entrance. It was way too wide. Damn. But uh, yeah, this was a map you know, Buddy mentioned earlier back in the days of Protoss. Kind of like good times. That is 100% sarcasm. Zerg and Terran alike both agree this map sucked when Protoss were in the map. Or, when, sorry, Protoss sucked when this was in the map pool. Just so many ways to abuse this with Blink and all-ins, and it was... You you would rarely see long games. I think one of the craziest... I don't know if what your favorite memories. One of my craziest heavy rain memories, though, was Stardust versus Kane, back when they are both on my insanity. And uh, Stardust went, like, mass carriers in a couple of Tempests, and Kane went, like... Swarm host and almost won. It's kind of stupid. There's, there's that one game with the uh, Protoss that was. He doesn't play anymore. He was kind of one of the old school guys, um, but he went carriers if you remember. On this map. Man, carriers just like never happened. Straight yeah, up. Yeah, so we were very excited when it happened. I just can't remember his name, but it was a very uh, late game. So as far as like ZVP, there were enough late game maps. Yeah, but for Terran versus Protoss, it was. Like blink stalker, like and in, in, it just ends like 14 minutes, and, and someone is one, you know, which is going to be the the uh, theme of the next few maps. These are all coincidentally, I don't know if they did on purpose, but maps that kind of came around each other timing wise. So heavy rain, Neo Planet S, Frost, uh, Hana, Polar Night, like a, a couple of those maps are also like blink stalker flashback, like wake up in my dreams, you know, crying and sweating. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest thing, of course, back then, too, was when the Mothership Corps had the range of a god. Literally God's eye. <laughs> you just see, like, the entire map of the Mothership Corps. Yep. And uh, there's, just, there's a lot of things that really compounded. Like, it wasn't... I'm really glad, because you remember when they were talking about potentially nerfing Blink? Like, I'm really glad they, they never did. I still think yeah. Blink is great as is, and folks like Parting would never shine the same way they do if they had changed it. But uh, nerfing the Mothership Corps... Uh, reducing a lot of other things really made uh, Blink less less yeah, auto auto winny. <laughs> their vision and their time warp. His time warp was also like a really big deal. You would see where they were, and then you would time up the ramp. <laughs> they would just go to the other base, bad. yeah, and have a good time. Uh, Reaper sadly not going to get a lot done here, but he does keep them alive. Mm -hmm. This is a good map for three Reapers too. I know we saw a couple other maps where we did this, but this is the one that is guaranteed. Like this was the Reaper map. Because if it was a Reaper map, then it was a Blink Stalker map, you know? So, easy to keep track of. Synonymous, yet not the same at all. <laughs> yes. One's much worse than the other. The other big thing about this map is that there are, is a lot of dead space in both your bases. There's at least five different locations where you need to put a Supply Depot just to cover, you yeah. know, against Nidus uh, Worms. Back, 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 and yeah, even down here. Uh, we got a five dollar donation, by the way, from Gandhi. Or sorry, yeah, Gandhi 001 or 011. Five dollars, but no message. 
So I think you're contributing to the uh, prize pool of these two players. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, you didn't notice that Snoop did take down the rocks? Something that he remembered doing, I suppose. Yeah, sometimes you just see it's never never touch at all, but the there's like a middle middle pathway that tanks could have used back in that, the day. That Reaper control, by the way. Then walks into like some uh, some links. Awkward. Yeah, that was really good. But that just means that he has one less pathway to worry about scouting. You know, you're not gonna put an overload in the middle of the map there, so they could oh. technically surprise you with a push. Man, I'm just remembering like Again, the memory's all flooding back. Like you'd have the planetary or the orbital set up here at the third, and the wall of depots just straight from the geysers to the wall. <laughs> hey, yeah, and you have the planetary at the fourth base where the Hellions are now. Like, oh god. Yeah, this was a uh, this was a bit of an insane map back when this was very competitive, and it wasn't so bad, but it was also very rarely picked. Kind of like the infernal pools of his time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Oh, we have Bio again from Bunny. Hasn't shown any mech at all. He's on the one map that we thought he might. Decided to go for Bio. Very late Bio. So, uh, this might be an endurance thing. <laughs> you know, like, mech usually lends uh, to longer games. <clears throat> Norway to be what he's comfortable with. Well, that positioning in the mineral is pretty good. I'm surprised he chose to give it up. Uh, trying to kite things like speed links never too fun, but... He got six drone kills and a lot of links treated out for it. So, I mean, resources lost still a little bit in his favor. Not bad, not bad. But it always goes back to like how many links left over and how much is you they want to dedicate back in the links. Can they deny your third while your production is still getting up? That's why that move can be very risky. That's why he's getting a bunker as well. Uh, a move like that can mean they just go for bane links as the counterattack, which Bunny has already lost to once. Well, I'm a little bit curious on something here for the chat just while we're while we're going at this. It's not going to affect the matches. Obviously, we're still going to be casting. The best of 69 here in Heart of the Swarm, but I am curious, like, would you guys um, prefer to see something like this on Heart of the Swarm or new Legacy of the Void stuff? I guess type 1 for Heart of the Swarm and 2 for Legacy of the Void in chat. Just a little bit curious is all. Not that we, I don't think we're going to do another one of these anytime soon. I'm just curious on what crowd opinion is. Mm. We, we couldn't do one in Legacy of the Void. They don't have any other maps. <laughs> Six, best of 69 on Orbital Shipyard, 69 times in a row. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, bringing down more rocks. There are quite a few rocks on Heavy Rain. It's nice to see that Snoot remembers all of these and that he's using the lings to get effects. Opening up pathways for Zerg usually favors them. Hmm. A lot of a lot of twos to chat. Surprisingly, actually. I thought that, there'd be... Like, see the void option? Yeah. Okay. That'd be a lot more ones. I mean, I like Heart of the Swarm because it's, it's, it's the fact that they're both so well practiced in it. They've both been playing towards and for WCS. Sally Snoot, of course, recently got knocked out. But it's it's one of those things where I I like this because you're gonna get 69, well, potentially 69 of the best games. Like you see, the void might be a little more scrappy. Yeah. But uh, sometimes scrappy is good. Medivac control here picks up some of the weak Marines trying to minimize losses. Could be chipping away that one medivac. Like, it's all these little subtle things that a bunny I'm really starting to enjoy. Like, two and a half hours into this, sorry, almost three hours, pardon me, into this best 69, and he is really showing uh, that he's not getting tired. In fact, if anything, he's warming up and getting better. Well, we started at the beginning of the day for Europeans, basically, right? So for him, for both of them, it's probably going to be like a regular ladder session day, like a ladder grind. So I'd, I'd say only after like uh, maybe six hours would they really start to, to weather. Maybe a little bit sooner just because there's not many breaks, but still, I mean, they some of this is just daily uh, pro gaming lifestyle. That positioning in the middle line. Oh, Kriegasm if you're a Terran player. Yeah, Stoot is uh, constantly getting like later and later mutas, you know? Which is so odd because, I mean, just it seems like two base muta was in the thing to do for like two months. Oh yeah, impact and, and true. Kind of, like, every week, know. every Saturday, the Unlima League, that's all we would see. Right. Right, now it's back to being more stylized and like, you know, you can do either or. But to get such late mutas always, it's a wonder that people funny starting to abuse it. This is terrible. I mean, Stuart can go ahead and do like the all in and maybe that was his plan and why he never got Aspire. No, he could Aspire. We never got mutas. I, I don't know. God, 30, uh, 30 SCV or drones died, by the way. It's just, it's, uh,. He gets the Spire, doesn't get the Mutas, and uh, now all he can do is go he's, for like an all-in with 2-2. Two, oh. two. <laughs> he's got 100 links as well. GG. Yeah, this, this is too far gone. Bunny, 
Getting closer and closer to bridging that gap. Now with the score being five to six, still though in the 